Matt Jesus on a Pilgrimage, Still Walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. Heavenly Father, I humbly beseech you to see before you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Let the doors of this place be open, and may peace be to all people who enter here. These are the words spoken tonight as we reopen and rededicate our church here at St. Thomas. But I noticed as I was getting ready to knock on the wood, which by the way, I'll need a little repair uh, after that, uh, that your uh, cornerstone outside reminds us that we do this for the glory of God, all things here for the glory of God. And so it is upon that theme that I wish to uh, thank and consider the great liturgies of the Anglican communion around what it is that we do when we set buildings aside for God's worship. Because one might ask today, why even bother? Well, it matters. It matters a lot. It matters not just simply because we as Christians have uh, worshipped in this place for many a year. It doesn't, it's not because we want to continue to worship But God actually intends a purpose in the rededication, in the work of building up houses that glorify God. Now, as we've read through and prayed our different prayers, we are aware that our faith ancestors have indeed sought to build altars out in the wilderness. Since the very beginning, when God called Abraham into the wilderness, almost the first thing he did was to to worship God, give thanks for God's care and uh, to set up an altar. But that has been true in cities, in catacombs, and all places where Christians have found worship over the many hundreds of years. And there is a deep theological peace at work here. For we believe that humans are made in God's image and that we in that image are in part intended to co-create with God. We're given the Holy Spirit to enliven the arts through many gifts and many hands who build and craft such spaces that we don't actually see construction, for instance, in the building of pews and setting aside of of preaching uh, uh, of of the three uh, uh, pulpits here, of all, all of that, you see, we see as reflection of God's handiwork through the individuals as do. Think of the many hundreds of men and women who have worked on this site in our school building and on this building and imagine that their gifts have been offered not just simply for a day's wage, but God has actually worked through them, offering their very best gifts to the church and in praise and thanksgiving for God. And so on this day, we are thankful for the many hands and the many people who have led such work. And as we do this, we are making a statement about who we are as God's creatures to build in stone and through living stone relationships and beautiful things. This work has a purpose, the one that has a purpose, the one that is beyond our kind of anthropological nature, our human beingness, and one that is beyond the aesthetic work of making beautiful things. We are to engage here the work of beauty through worship, a particular kind of aesthetic that we are to gather in order to make this the temple of the Holy Spirit which on this day we have restored to the glory of God through gifts of the diocese, your own gifts and leadership in this place, insurance payments made over the many years, all of it being gathered in for the purpose, not just of building a new building, but rededicating and remaking the place in which we come to worship. To set apart this place for worship in order that when we gather, to hear the word proclaimed and the sacrament at table, that what we are doing is glorifying God and seeking 
to reflect back to God God's own beauty and glory. Certainly, we have done so in our music this evening, have we not? If that alone were our testimony. But it won't be. We will break bread together and continue to the table fellowship where our own binding together or beyond differences reveals a unity of Christ's body beyond our kind of human incapacities. This means that in this place we are to model a vision of God's love and grace and power and might and forgiveness such that it builds us up as living stones, as temples of the Holy Spirit when we leave this place. In other words, we don't just come in here to do the work. But we come in here to be changed and transformed by the message of Christ and Christ's gospel to us that we may go out into the world and worship God in such a way as to build a different kind of community, to roll our sleeves up and to meet the needs of our neighbors and the people of the city of Houston, to worship God, yes, but to worship God and also through the service of others. Since the very beginning, in the field near Mamre, Abraham bought himself a burial site. So we also come into this place, having set a place, set apart a place in which we may remember the dead. That we can come and give thanks for the ministries of those who passed before us, the many generations, people who started this journey with us in Harvey but didn't make it to today but instead have gone on to heaven. We come to this place in order to remember them and their gifts and as Jesus wept for his friend Lazarus, so it is we come here to weep and not only give thanks. So by doing though, we enact something very important beyond simply word and sacrament. But we begin to be transformed and be reminded of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which will in the end draw us forward into God's embrace. Now, sometime, and there's some debate over this, but sometime in the midst of the early church, and it could be because people who did woodwork worked on ships, it may also be tied to the fact they only knew how to span great distances with architecture such as this. But somewhere along the way, the church began to take on the metaphors from the sea, and in particular, the parts of a boat. In this way, the church building itself is a sacred space and at once a shelter from the stormy seas that are out there, as if we turned it upside down to protect ourselves, to come inside, to be safe with our brokenness and our need for healing. And it is also a sign of the boat <laughs> that carries us into the stormy seas of the lives around us, to new shores of mission, to change us into fishermen for Christ and enable this place to truly be that from which we go to proclaim God's word in the world. So indeed, let us remember the glory of God is in this place and we are to worship here with each other and remember our lives and leave and go into the world. So yes, let the doors be open. Let the end of Harvey's wrath stop today that we may move forward in our mission. Let us come here to praise God's name, to ask God's forgiveness, to know God's healing and power to hear God's word for our time, to be nourished by the body of God's Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, so that our lives are sustained and sanctified as we are carried out into the seas of other people's lives. 
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter, at Texas Bishop, and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.